Joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord who is valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord who is valiantly. I shall live and tell of the works of the Lord. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. of this very thing that he Let's, uh, let's let's do, let's pray for him. praise God as Brother Kofa pray Lord God that you would prepare our hearts Father to receive your word Father God that our hearts will be good ground towards you Father God and we know that the word of God comes up to us on three levels Father God the blade the ear and the full corn Father God and I thank you Father in Jesus name Father God that you distribute this seed it is written Lord God that the sower soweth the word glory to God and we sow this word in our hearts Father God I thank you Lord God that we might see the harvest right now but i thank you in the future father god if we continue to sow in the spirit lord god we will reap hallelujah what we sow Amen. thank you father in jesus name for the entrance of your word that gives light it gives understanding to the simple father god quicken us oh god according to your word father for your word is truth and i thank you lord god that because of your word father god as you said lord jesus sanctify them through thy word Thy word is truth. I thank you, Lord God, that you sanctify us unto yourself, Father God, that we might be used unto your glory, Father, and that we might come into our inheritance and our part in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I was saying, uh, well, this, 
I was, uh, you know, brother, uh, brother Daniel asked me to, to talk again about obedience, right? Yeah. And the thing about it is, right, is that the scripture says about Jesus in, in um, Hebrews chapter 5, all these scriptures that I'm going to cover today, if anybody wants the outlines for all this, I have them. And, uh, and I can send them to you. It says in uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Okay? Now, if we look in uh, Luke chapter 2, I think it's Luke chapter 2, there's something that happened in the life of Jesus Christ. Um, and if you remember the story, they lost Jesus. Make sure this is it. Yeah. So we start out with Luke chapter 2, verse 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. All right. So they kept the feast. You know, they were Jewish. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and, and his mother knew not of it. All right? Now, what would you do if you lost your son or daughter? Hmm. For three days, as we're going to see here, he stayed behind. Now, the interesting thing about this is that when they use the word child here, uh, it's the word napios. N-E-P-I-O-S in the Greek. Napios means an infant or a young boy or girl. Okay? So, the, but the thing about the word napios is there's five different Greek words that, that help us understand the spiritual maturity of the Christian. Napios means infant or baby. That's when you first get born again, man. You're napios. You don't have anything to say except your testimony and what he delivered you from. Okay. You probably know Romans 10, 9, and 10 and John 3, 16. Right? So then, um, so then uh, you're an atheist, right? And then the scripture says, I mean, the word of God shows us another Greek word. It's called potion. Potion is where we get the word for potty stage. So you got a little baby, and now he's starting to walk around a little bit, but he still has diapers, and he still makes a lot of mess. He still needs a lot of help. Yeah. You see, this is, this is called the spiritual maturity right, of the Christian. And then you have technon. Technon, if you look in John 1, 12, it says, To as many as received him, to them gave he power, which is the word exosia, which means authority, to become, become as geneo, my generate, right? Authority to become, generate the sons of God. No, authority to become sons of God. Sons of God, their sons, is the word technon. Technon means a teenager. Okay? And as a teenager... All right, and we think we're ready for the cars, the keys to the car, right? Oh, no. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We, they think they're ready and responsible enough to do all these responsibilities that, a, that an adult has to do. Pay bills, you know, if you're married, etc. All these things, they want to do them at, at the techno stage. But they're still not ready. No ready. You give them the keys to your car, and they're burning out the tires. They're get, having wrecks. You know, they're, they're, they're having accidents. They're causing problems. They still don't want to respect the boundaries. They know that they think they know, right? We talked about that a few weeks ago about Romans 13, 1, all authorities of God, right? So they don't want to abide by the boundaries, okay? And then we have the word weos. Jesus was the weos of God. The son of God is the word weos, son, and it means fully matured. Fully matured son of God. Romans 8, 14 says, for as many as are led of the Spirit of God, these are the weas of God. Okay? And then as you read on down there in Romans chapter 8, there it says that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the weas of God. Yeah. Why? Because when you come into maturity, you're coming into responsibility. You can be trusted now. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the weas of God, the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten weas. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting Zoe life. So a weas is somebody that can be trusted. You can give him the keys. He's going to be responsible. He's not going to drive all reckless on the road. He's going to take care of his responsibilities at home. He's going to take care of his children, his wife, etc. He's going to feed them the word of God. He's going to teach them and train them, etc. when they're out of order. I mean, he's busy, right? And then you have the last one, which is pater, which is father. 
right? And Paul, in 1 Corinthians 4, 14, he says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved technons, I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me, Paul said. Follow me as I follow the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the issue with fathers, right? We know in our society what, what, what our situation is like all throughout society because the father's not doing their part, right? In the natural. Mm, yeah. What happens to our kids? What happens to our little boys, little girls? They grow up without significance. They don't feel like they have any value and sense of importance. Why? Because their father didn't provide that for them. The father, by the way, is the only one that can provide significance. A mother can provide a certain measure of significance, but not the way the father gives it to a son or daughter. Mm. You see? And there's a distinction there. And so, if you look at Malachi 4, 5, and 6, it talks about, it says, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. So in other words, in the natural, when the fathers aren't in their place, our society suffer. The mother suffers. She's got to do it all on her own. But he's not out of place. He thinks he can be just a stud and just have 50 women, you know. And so all this stuff is right is a, is a man that's been taken out of his place because he doesn't understand his part in the kingdom of God, which is... What we're doing is we're trying to learn what the Word of God says about all these areas of our life, right? In Hebrews chapter 11, the scripture says of Abram that he looked for a city, verse 10, for he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. A couple of things here. The word city is the Greek word polis, P-O-L-I-S. And we think police, is, you know, a lot of it has a negative connotation because, you know, they, these guys get stressed out too and they mess up. Yeah. So we see that in our society, and man, we don't want to deal with anything with police, right? Mm -hmm. But but the scripture says in Romans 13 that, that be afraid for they bear not the sword in vain. In other words, they get, they've been commissioned to maintain the boundaries in their city and their organizations. Mm -hmm. And the word city is also, the, like I said, policy, which is where we get the word for politics, policies. All this has to do with setting up the boundaries and setting up those that are going to maintain the boundary. So anyway, and he says he looked for a city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. In other words, when you start getting a revelation of the kingdom of God, amen, as the scripture says, you must be born again and you can't even see it. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. You can't enter it. And when you enter it, it means it's a part of your life now. But when you're seeing it, you're still, you're still not entering into that word or that promise of God in your life. And so it's not just, you know, I got born again, that's it. You've got to continue on, right? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Yeah. Blessed is you who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. In other words, you want the right way of God. You want those foundations about what the word of God teaches us about how to be a man, how to be a woman, single, how to be a married husband, how to be a married woman, how to, be, how to maintain your children, right? How to keep them in order. How to follow the rules in the city, how to how to conduct yourself in the library. I mean, all this is teaching them about how to respect authority everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing, is that is that we get to that, like I said, that place, that technon, he he decides that he doesn't want to be responsible and he's not gonna to listen to his parents, and you know, you got a whole facet of problems there. But like I said, when you get the revelation of the kingdom of God, your heart now wants to understand what does God's word say about that matter. The foundation, you see, you want the word to speak to that matter. Mm. Now, <clears throat> so those are the five Greek words that talk about spiritual maturity. And there's a whole set of, you know, there's scriptures all over the place about this. And like I said, the fathers, this is what we're trying to get to as sons of God. Because Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. father. And if you see the father, see the son, you see? There, there, there is no distinction there as far as one is representing the father. The father is the one important to the son. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So the father is a very important in our lives. And so what, had, what happened is, is that now that God prophesied this, that lest I come and smite the earth with the curse, when the fathers are not in their place, the land is cursed. Mm. Because the fathers to their wives and to the children are the porters. The porter means is a Greek word 
I mean, I mean, Porter's is the word found in John chapter 10, verse 3. And it simply means the gatekeeper. Somebody watching the door is the porter. He's got the keys. He can get in and out. He can go. It also says he's a janitor. You see? And so in John 10, 3, Jesus is talking here. Well, first of all, verse 1, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth in not by the door, but climbeth into the sheepfold some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Yeah. Everybody that operates out from under authority and they're doing it their own way, they're operating in the principle of the thief. Mm. Because there's an order in how God structured all this. When we don't follow the pattern of the order, in other words, the government, whatever that government is in our city, in our state, in our nation, the boundaries that have been set to us by the Lord according to his word, respect authority is what God teaches us. When we go out of line, we're, we're operating the principle of the thief. And the word, so, and then it says verse 2, but he that, he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. He that enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, let's say you got somebody coming to your house. Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock Saturday morning, he's going to be there. He's going to fix something wrong with electricity. So you're the porter, you tell your wife, hey, so and so's gonna be here. Yeah. So she knows she's under authority if she lets this person in to the home. Amen. Right? Amen. But what happens when somebody comes and the porter doesn't know about it, the shepherd? You see? And, and and they come to the door on Saturday mornings. I get visitations all the time from people that are walking around thinking they're doing those the work of God. And they want to talk to me about, you know, their kingdom and stuff. And they start asking you questions based on fear. And anyway, uh, I, I talked to them, and I preached them the kingdom of God, right? And, uh, but the point is, is that they're not invited. You see, nobody set that up. So the porter is saying no. The porter is the gatekeeper, as you're going to see in verse 3 now. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. In other words, the husband of, 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 of in, in a situation with his wife and children, he already scheduled for the electrician to be there. So the wife knows it's okay, yeah. and the children know it's okay. So so the, if, if that individual says something, hey, I need this from you, they're going to listen to it. Yeah. And it's the same thing in our lives. The word porter is the word gatekeeper. And gatekeeper means is that whatever's coming in and out of your life, you're the one that says no, and you're the one that says yes. And you're the one that has to guard your heart, right? Because the scripture says that keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. You can't give life of God if you're all wrapped up in yourself. You see, if you're allowing all this perversion and all this wickedness to come in and out of your life, and you want to serve the Lord, you can't even figure out how to come out of your spirit, man, with life. There's a difference. So... <clears throat> So that's, that's the port of ministry there. And, and there's a whole, like I said, you know, all throughout the Old Testament, if you look at it, the, the scripture talks about those before King David and his structure, the way it had it set up, they had four at the causeway, two at the port of water, porters. The four at the causeway, if anybody wasn't invited, they wouldn't let him in. But if he got through, there was two more that could say, no, you're not getting to the king. Mm -hmm. You see? So that's, that's a little bit about the port of ministry. And we have to porter our own lives. We have to port our wives, our children. In other words, if my children are saying something that's out of order to the word of God, the first thing I want to know is where did you get that information? Yeah. I'm saying no to that. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you a little something here that the scriptures, okay, so it goes like this. A man's confession is a result of his belief. Yeah. A man's belief is a result of his thinking. A man's thinking is a result of his knowledge. Hmm. And there's only two sources, God or the devil. Hmm. You see that? So, so it starts like this. So you got belief. No, I'm sorry. Confession, belief, thinking, knowledge, and source. Knowledge. And so we have to understand where is the source of this information coming from. There again, you have to understand this because you need to understand if you need to say no or yes to this information. Right? So as you were saying earlier when you were praying, brother, Kaufman, talking about information that's coming at us, right, from all over the world, news, news sources, broadcasting, whatever. And, and as for me and my house, as, as Joshua said, we're going to serve the Lord, right? We're going to keep on doing the word of God. That's the whole goal of the enemy is keep this word 
out of your heart and out of your life because if the word gets in your heart, that's going to start producing Christ. Amen? Amen. And he knows that when we come into our place as sons of God and daughters of God, that now we have authority to say no to Satan. Say no to his perversion. Say no to the cosmos, which is the world system and everything that operates in the world, right? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the cosmos. For if the love of the cosmos is in you, the love of the Father is not with you. So the cosmos is that orderly arranged system. The scripture says he's the God of this world. Satan is. And the word world is cosmos. He's the one that structured all this perversion out there. These young little women wear their stuff real tight and their pants real tight. and You got all this looseness everywhere, man. Yeah. You know, these commercials on television, you know, uh, advertising, you know, sex appeal and all this perversion, man. And the whole goal is to keep you distracted from the word. Keep your mind and your heart off the Lord, right? So we have to port of that and say no, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so in uh, Psalm 16, verse 5, and you mentioned inheritance earlier. And, and so it says that the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot, right? My area, right? The lions are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. As long as we stay in the lions or the boundaries, we are safe. We're provided for. We're being taken care of. But as soon as you step out of the boundary, let's say you're going 85 and a 55 driving. Guess what? You're out of your boundary. And guess what? Those that have authority to say no and give you a whipping by giving you a ticket. You see what I'm saying? You are out of order. Therefore, take your lick, man. So, let's say this. When our children get out of bounds, when they disobey, right? They're out of order. They're over there, you know, hurting their little sister or their little brother or they're yelling at each other or, you know, they went outside and they're not supposed to or whatever. You know, you've got to constantly maintain your children, your children, right? And the scripture teaches us that, 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 that a, a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. You see, in other words, they don't have any oversight in their lives. There's nobody taking care of them and keeping up with them and providing authority and structure to their lives and teaching them the boundaries. And so the scripture says in Proverbs 10, 1, a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother, right? So you've got a son or a daughter, man, that they don't want to comply. They don't want to do, you know, they don't want to maintain order in the home. They just want to come in and out when they want to. They come in at all hours of the night. You know, they're, they're just walking foolishly and arrogant. Boy, you talk to them, you know, they're all offended, man. They just, you can't even make sense with them, right? Because their hearts are out of order. And so the thing is, is that it says the foolish son is the heaviness of his mother, right? So is our father, when we're obedient to his will, God the Father is happy, glad. Because Jesus said, I always, in John 8, 29, he says, And he that sent me is with me, and the Father has not left me alone. For I always do those things that please him. You see that? The we ask, the one that's fully matured, only wants his father's will in his life. He doesn't care what man says, right? He's not looking at, at CNN and all these other places trying to get information. In 1 John 5, 9, verse 9, 5, 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he had testified of his wills. See, it's about Jesus, but it's also about you when you grow up. This is the witness of God which he has testified of his wills. In other words, God is always going to confirm his sons of God. He's always going to recognize them because they're coming into honor and promotion. And they're coming into their place in the kingdom of God. They're coming into their inheritance. Now they're in a greater measure in their walk with God. And there's no question to them when, they're, when, they're, when something's out of order in their lives and a brother or sister brings them the word of the Lord. You know what, brother or sister? You're right, man. I'm out of order right there. And the first thing they want to do is go get it right with the Father. That's all they care about, man, being in the order with God. So I got a statement here. It says the will of God is the word of God. The word of God is is the way of God. Amen. And the way of God is the work of God. Amen. 
Every one of us wants to come to their place in the kingdom of God, right? We all want to know what our part is from the Father, right? Yeah. Amen? Amen? So you can't get there if you're not doing the word. That's the order of first things. You need to get that word in your life. You need to be obedient to that word, right? Amen. And so the word of God, it says here, is the way of God. You're going to understand the way of the Father of God, which is sonship, sons and daughters of God that are mature. And, and the scripture says of uh, that the children of Israel knew his acts, but Moses knew his ways. Mm. The ways of God, man. The son of God, the sons of God, and the daughters of God that are wanting to come into maturity, they want to understand how God operates so they can, co so they can uh, cooperate. Instead of always, as it says here, the heaven, but a foolishness, foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Well, when you weren't out of order, because we're not doing the word of God, guess what? We are also um, now pleasing to our Father. We're walking foolishly. Mm. This is the first part. Mm. Oh, so, <clears throat> all right. Now, I'm going to get into something here now. Again, we're talking about our boundaries, right? And we, we're talking about how do we come into our part in the Lord, right? We need to understand that God is a God of order, man. When you're in heaven, everything is in order, man. Everything is in its place, man. There's nothing out of order. You go to God's house, man, everything is decked out. Everything is in his order. You got your porters where they're supposed to be. You got everybody watching, doing their part. You got the guy that mops the floor. He's taking care of things. You got the guys that sweep. You got the guys that take out the trash. You got the guys that are teaching and, and preaching the word of God. Because guess what? The scripture says that, uh, talking about children, is that their, their faces behold the face of angels. You see that? Guess what they're doing up there? They're teaching. Guess what the Apostle Paul is doing up there right now? He's teaching people the word of God. He's laying the foundation of Jesus Christ. Mm. You understand? Amen. It doesn't change just because you're up there. Mm. So, mm. Gracias. Mm -hmm. All right, so All right. we're going to get into a couple of words here. Amatros. Metron and Canon. And this is all found in 2 Corinthians 10, 12 through 15. So I'm going to give you the definitions of these words. Amatros means A, when you see A in front of a Greek word, Greek word it means no or not. Okay? No or not. So Amatros here, the word Metros comes from the word Metron, so no Metron. And then Metron is your boundary, where you're supposed to be. Right? So in other words, as you come into your inheritance in the kingdom of God, you start understanding your strengths in the Lord. That's your metron. Mm -hmm. That's where you're safe at. The boundary that God has given you. Right? Metroplex. Okay. Yeah. And then the other word here is canon. K-A-N-O-N. Not canon cameras. Although those are good cameras. <laughs> you remember, like, when you had these battles and stuff back in the day, and, and they had these cannons. Right? And whoever had the cannon was the standard bearer. In other words, he set the tone for the whole war. If you had the cannon, you pretty much had the, had the game won. Mm. The cannon means the standard. The, the, the word is the cannon, the standard. Okay. So I'm giving you those definitions, and we're going to read them now. In 1 Corinthians 10, 12, in King James, he says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. All right? And then it says, but they measuring themselves, estimating themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves amongst themselves are not wise. Why are we trying to measure up to the world, right? He says, if we receive the witness of men, the, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Why do we need their recognition? You see, why do I need the seal of the world on my life to say, good job, Joseph? I don't need that, man. Mm. I need the Father to say, as he said of Jesus Christ, this is my beloved we are in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. That's what I want to hear, man. Amen. Amen. And by the way, the highest attainment in the kingdom of God that you can come to is to be a son or a daughter of God that's obedient to the word. All this other stuff that comes from the world, you know, that they want to they wanna attain to these things that they consider um, a sense of value in their lives. They want significance. Every one of us wants to feel like they were valuable and important. But we're only going to get that from the Father. 
So he said, the if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God in which he have testified. The word testified is martyrion, which means to walk around as a dead man, to be a witness, to give evidence of himself. It says, testified of his son, the weas. And it says, verse 10, he that believeth on the weas of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath not May have made him a liar because he believeth not the record, the witness that the God gave of his will. It's the same thing with Jesus Christ. When you start coming into the kingdom of God, man, you start understanding clearly those that are coming out of their spirit and representing God, those that are coming out of their flesh. Hmm. You start seeing the distinction. Amen? Amen? And the kingdom of God is all about distinction. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you against me. you're against me, man. There is no other way but Jesus Christ and what he taught us in the word. So it says here, verse 13, but we would not boast of things without our amatros, without our limited portion. Amatros is without measure, immense, or immoderate. When you're immense or immoderate, that means you're way overextended in your life, man. So let's say, like, like again, we're talking about electrician, right? Well, I mean, I could hook up a couple things in the house. But I don't understand, I understand the foundation of electrical. I can mess something up pretty easy mm -hmm. and hurt myself yeah. or my family. So that's not my, I would be amateurs if I tried to get into that. Mm -hmm. Now you talk to me about computers, oh. software and programs and all these things. I'm all over that, man. I've been doing that for over 25 years, really? see? Ah. So I can tell you about all this stuff, man. And so that, that is my metron. So, so we will not boast of things without our measure, without our immoderate, immense portion. But according to the metron, the limited portion, what you measure with of the rule, the canon, which is a rod to keep things straight, a standard, a boundary, which God had distributed to us, a metron to reach even unto you. Paul was talking to the Corinthians when he was telling this. And he had to tell them that, that, that I'm not excessive in what I'm trying to do here. I know what my part is and what the Lord has commissioned me to do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I know I'm in my metron. And the metron is according to the canon or the word of God. That's my standard. That's how I keep things straight. If I start mixing up the word and, and, and making it fit my selfishness, mm -hmm. I'm out of order, man. You see? So it says, <clears throat> again, we, won't, we don't compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. I'm not looking out there at the world and looking what kind of style they have, what kind of cars they drive, what kind of houses they have, what kind of food they're eating. I'm just going to be who I am as a son of God, right? Yeah. Amen. And all we can be is who you are. Mm -hmm. There's no point in you trying to be like, you know, um, what's his name, that basketball player, Mike? Michael Jordan? Yeah. There's no point in us trying to be like Mike. <laughs> He's, there's only one Michael Jordan, right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody else can attain to what he attained to, right? It's the same thing with us. You can't come into what, something else that God hasn't given you. In other words, the inheritance that he's given you, that's your portion. Only you can fulfill what God has given you. I can't do your part, and you can't do my part. You see what I'm saying? So it says in verse um, 14, For we stretch not ourselves beyond, to be extended beyond the prescribed bounds. You see? Uh, our, our measure as though we reach not unto you for we are come as far as unto you also in preaching the gospel of Christ not boasting not bragging in other words, without our amateurs we're not going to tell you things that we're not graced in that we don't have strength in amateurs in other words I'm not going to extend myself I'm not going to pretend like, like I love God you know I'm not going to be a hypocrite in other words <laughs> And, and say one thing and do another thing. I'm, I'm going to stick to what the word, the canon is. So it says, not boasting of things without our amateurs, our immoderate, excessive, that is of other men's labors, but having hope. When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our canon abundantly. In other words, he says, according to our rule. Canon is the rule of God. Amen. Amen. And the rule of God needs to be first in your heart. That's called the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He's not just your Savior, but he now wants to be your Lord. And as your Lord, his word dictates your life. Yeah. Mm. And that's the distinction of ones, ones that want to be obedient to God versus those that don't. 
So every son of God has their, every daughter and son of God has their portion, their inheritance. We will never come into our inheritance outside of Jesus Christ. So this kingdom that we, we are a part of as sons of God, so we, the king, there's two words, king of a domain. The domain that he wants first order is right here. This is what the world needs, man, the manifest sons of God in Romans chapter 8 again. All of creation, it says, groans and travails together in pain until now, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because now we're going to do it like Jesus did it in the earth. We're going to please the Father. We're going to do the will. We're going to do it the way to come into our work. Amen. The place that God has given us. You know, when I started back in April 2018, I didn't know that I was coming into my inheritance. In other words, I started, I was at a fellowship and they wanted me to teach them, right, the word. But what happened is, is that as I taught them the word and taught them that you've got to die to yourself, you see, as Jesus taught them, you must eat my flesh, Jesus said in John chapter 6, and drink my blood. You see, what was he saying there? Well, if we understand the word of God, the flesh is the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. You've got to take me into your life. You've got to partake of my word and eat it daily. And then the blood, the scripture says the life of the flesh in Leviticus is in the blood. Yeah. The word life is the word nefesh, which means soul. Mm. The soul of the flesh is in the blood. So we know that Jesus' blood, even before he went to the cross, right, in Matthew chapter 26, right there, he says, not my will, but thine will be done. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh, the carnal man, is weak. The spirit man wants to go with God, but if you're full of the world, you're always going to slap to the carnal man. And you cannot mix carnals with spirituals. The spiritual man, he's moving on with God, amen. But the carnal man, he doesn't have a clue where this guy's at, man. <laughs> because he's not following the Lord. If he was following the Lord, he would be quickened in his spirit. In other words, he's got the witness of God inside him. As it says in 1 John 5, 9 and 10. So it says, so he's got to be first in our lives, amen. Seek ye first the kingdom, the domain, the king of that domain, Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. And then he says, in John 14, we're going to read 1 through 6. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Mm -hmm. Right? In my Father's house are many mansions. Right? Mm -hmm. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, Brother Kafa. Brother. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Brother, sister. Millie. Millie. Rachel. Rachel. I go to prepare. In other words, I'm going to make an inheritance for you, prepared for you. As you increase, as he said, as he said, 2 Corinthians 10 over there, as, as according to our, it says, not boasting of things that are measured, Amateurs, that is, of other men's labor, but having hope when your faith is increased. You see, it's all about faith towards God, right? Mm. Not faith in stuff, by the way. Faith in the Word. Amen. Okay, there's a difference. But, again, as you go in, as you increase in your faith toward God, guess what? You're taking more ground, more ground, and more ground. In other words, you're increasing in dominion. You see? And in that dominion, as, you, as, you're, as you're moving on, Jesus Christ is adding another measure to your life, another area of inheritance, another area of dominion, which is what he wants us all to do. Not dominion in the land of the, of the flesh and the world, dominion in the spirit. Because this is the, the realm that needs to be controlled because it's out of control right now. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, this world, spiritual and wickedness in high places. This demonic realm... It has overtaken mankind, right? And as you grow in your, and you're increasing your faith, you keep, now you're starting to grow. Your metron is increasing. Your boundaries are increasing. Now you have room to move in God like you never had before mm -hmm. because you understand faith toward God. And you understand that your Father is going to honor His Word no matter what. Amen. Amen? Amen. 
So it says, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there may you be also. So the scripture says, for as many as are led of the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. In other words, in that place where he is, that's where you're going to be, because you're going to be led of the Spirit. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is always going to testify of Jesus Christ. He's going to witness of Jesus Christ. He's going to glorify Christ. He's not going to glorify me. His goal is to glorify Jesus. And whatever Jesus tells the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost tells us. Amen. Amen? John 16, 13. So, again, you're going to be at that place where Jesus is at when you come into your part in the Lord. Because you're being led of the Spirit. And where I go, you, you, and where I go and the way you know. And so, in verse 5, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know where, where you're going and how can we know the way? They still didn't understand it by the Spirit. They kept seeing it carnal, man. And so it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the Zoe, the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. In other words, the pattern that I've set up for you, which is sonship. Sonship is the way and how we get there as well. Sonship is what God desires for every one of us to come into that maturity so that as Jesus said, I am the way. In other words, you're going to do it according to the pattern that I've already set up for you. There's no need to try to figure out another way to try to get to what God's part is for you except in the Lord. Amen. You can't find it anywhere else, man. You're not going to find it in... Now, I'm not, I'm, saying this to, I'm not saying this... I'm saying this, but I'm not saying that that's not what God has told any of us to do. But I remember when I was at a... I started working again in, in uh, 2014. I started working at this big, big ministry, right? I was a network systems administrator there. And uh, when I found out that, that they had classes that you could take, right, to learn the Word of God and stuff, I was excited. You know, they called it MIT, Ministers in Training, okay? So I, I got into that, and, and uh, I got into the second part of the class. Well, there was a guy... And uh, he was up there sharing, right? And he, and he says, that's what he said. He said, I used to know this Latina back in the day. He said, but y'all don't want to hear about that. Mm -hmm. He said stupid stuff like that. Mm. I said, what, what is this guy doing, man? Mm. The scripture says, why do you glory in those things whereof you are now ashamed? Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I looked at that and I said, man, something's wrong with that, man. And my spirit, man, started getting green. You see, about this time, it was on February the 7th, 2014. So, praise God. It was a Friday night. I was sitting there playing my guitar. And uh, my little boys, they were playing on the Xboxes. It was 1230 night. You know, we're just kind of having a guy's night out. <laughs> they were young, man. And uh, I sat there, and I was playing my guitar, and I could, I could adjust the volume on the, on the amplifier to get the sound the way I wanted, and I could do it over here on the guitar, on the knobs. So I was like, I was kind of impressed with myself, right? And then I made the statement to myself. I said, Joseph, what are you doing? All right? I said, Joseph, what are you doing? And, uh, and then, man, I started crying to the Lord, man. See, up to that point, I had been backslidden probably 13 or 14 years, man. Mm. See, I, I, was, I was involved in fellowship, man. I was growing strong in the Lord, and then, and then I decided to, to move on, man, because I didn't feel like God's word was being fulfilled in my life, so I went and tried to make it happen myself. Mm. Amen? It was an Ishmael. And, 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 and so that, that's what happens, right? That as, as, the, as the prodigal son, right? He didn't think he was getting his part and doing just what he was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go out and try to find it himself. Well, that's what I did. But on February the 7th, 2014, I was sitting there, man, and I, and I put my hand on my, this little tray that I had on the desk, and I, I did like that, and man, I started crying, man. And I, and I said, Father, forgive me, you know? And this is what just came out of my heart. It says, I said, Father, forgive me for not teaching your people the word. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And, and, and like I said, it was just brokenness, man. Brokenness, which crying. In other words, the scripture says that if the rock falls on you, Jesus said it's going to crush you to powder. But if you will to fall upon the rock, mm, you'll be broken. Yeah. 
And that's what we need, right? Brokenness. Yeah. Beauty and brokenness. We need to come forth out of our spirits, right? And you can't do it if you're the one in control. Mm. And so I was like that for months, man. Just every time I got in the presence of God, just start weeping and crying, man. You know, because the scripture says to whom much has been forgiven. Much is required. Amen. So I knew that the burden of God on my heart and my life was, was a heavy burden, man. I knew the, the, at that time, you know, what I'm going to have to start doing. Amen. And preparing the body of Christ. And, uh, you know, I started getting into the word again. I started praying and seeking God, man, faithfully and digitally getting into the word, getting into the Greek words. I mean, I started doing all this. And, uh, you know, God would show me dreams and different things. And, and then, uh, you know, my sister, she says, uh, I went to see my sister. And she says, well, are you going to go see Brother Jeff? You know, Brother Jeff was one of the elders in the fellowship of where I came from, right, in Marshall. And I said, you know, I hadn't even thought about that. So I went to see Brother Jeff, and he told me, he said, Joseph, the Lord has returned you back to the base of the operations. Mm -hmm. See? And we have to have a base of operations. This is what this is right here. This is a place to equip the saints, right? To get them ready for the ministry to go out. Mm. And now and I'm saying ministry, not, not like a title or anything. I'm saying to serve, man. That's what yeah, ministry means. Amen. Serve the people, man. Show them Jesus Christ. Mm. And so anyway, uh, that, that's what's happening. I just started getting into the Word again and, 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 and getting involved in the Word. Well, shortly after that is when I got that job over there at this place. And so I got into these classes, and I'm like, something's wrong here, man. <laughs> and, uh, and I started, like, you know, I started not going anymore. And, of course, anyway, I started realizing, as the Scripture says, that who are these guys, man? They're unlearned men, right? That's what they said to the apostles. They, they didn't have any education, any formal training. Who are these guys, man? The one distinction that they had is that they knew they had been with Jesus. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And in that, so I got a revelation here the other day. And uh, first of all, let me read this in Matthew 92 through 5. He says, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, amen, said unto the sick of palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Why are you, what, what prompted that kind of thinking? And he said, Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or say, Arise and walk. What's easier to say, man? It's the same thing. I forgive you, you're healed. I heal you, you're forgiven. Amen. It's the same thing. Yeah. And so, and that's the word of the Lord to, to the world right now, is that all, you, all we have to do is get back in the good grace of God and repent. We get our heart right with the Lord, amen. And as the scripture says, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, that then I would heal, no, then I would hear from heaven, then I'm going to heal the land. Yeah. So there's an order there. It's an order for things. We've got to get right with the Lord first. And that's why the Lord laid it on my heart about this, about this offense thing, and you know, how that if we're offended, when we're in, we're in we're in a place of, of darkness, man, right? and that we got to get that right before we can move on with God. But anyway, and, and verse six, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power, authority on earth to forgive sins. Then say thee to the sick of palsy, rise up, take of the bed, and go into your house. So this revelation, I, I was thinking about this the other day. It says that. Sickness cannot live in the presence of God. If you are healed, you are forgiven. It is our portion. It's your inheritance in the Lord. In other words, for all those that are out there, brothers and sisters, is that we've got to get into God's presence. As the scripture says, in his presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And that pleasures forevermore is that place of our inheritance that he keeps showing you this about your life. He reveals this about your life. He shows you this about your kids. He shows you this about your wife. And he's, and he's setting the order up in your house of how everybody's supposed to flow with one another. So, and, and, in, and in that scripture where I, I realized that it's the presence of God and that we're going to see here in Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. He says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people. And thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and I and has found 
also, and has also found grace in my sight. So Moses is saying this to the Lord. I know that you call me. You haven't told me who's going to go with me. And you're saying that you know me by name. And you're saying that I have grace with you. Now therefore I pray thee, Moses said, If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I might, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And, Mo, and he said, this is what God said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. You see, for as many as are led of the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The sons of God are able to walk in the presence of God. Because they have rest and peace all the time. You see, they understand the government of God, that they're submitted to a higher order, the Father of Spirits. And they, that's, where they, that's what they desire in their lives. They want to be obedient to God. So it says, my presence shall go with you. It, I'm sorry, and I will give you rest. So your presence is going to go with me, and I will give you rest, God said. And he said unto him, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't take us up. You see, I don't want to be involved in something that's not the will of God for my life. And neither should you and, and our brothers and sisters. Because God doesn't want us to waste our time. Amen. He, he does want to bring us into our own strength. But first, he's got to pour you out. He's got to empty you of all your vision, your desires, and your dreams. That's why he said, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. If you seek to save your own suke, your own soul, you're going to lose it. But if you seek to lose it, give it up for me. Give it up for Jesus. In other words, he'll bring you into that inheritance. He'll let you see it. But first, he's got to know that it's not you first. Whew. And think about what, what, the, what the apostles and disciples from the very beginning of the Acts, look at all that they accomplished, man. Because all these guys came into maturity. Yeah. 8,000, 5,000 miracles, preaching the word, man. They were in complete submission to the Holy Spirit, man. No questions asked. And now if you look at our societies and the way our fellowships are structured and what mankind has done with the word of God and the spirit of God and the power of God, they've abused it, right? They've wasted all this talent and all this strength. And they're at that place where, as the scripture says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you because you didn't do it my way. Okay. You see what I'm saying? The way of God, which is his, he's the pattern. You got to do it the way Jesus did. If he denied himself, guess what? You got to do it too. Because Jesus could have been a big time minister. He had he had 10,000 following him in Luke chapter 12, 1. Well, he could have been a big minister, man. He could, have, he could have done all this stuff like you know these big time ministers do. All about them. So our inheritance is the presence of God. As we read back in the first scripture that I read, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. In other words, if, as long as I'm in your presence, amen, I can go forth with strength and power, man. I can be confident because I, I am significant to the Lord. I am important because I've been spending time with you, Father. Now you're going to take it as you've trained me, as you've taught me all these years. Now you're going to utilize me and use me for your glory. Amen. So, again, healing is part of our inheritance. You know, revelation of the word of God, knowledge of the word of God, and so on is, is part of our inheritance. And again, sickness and disease cannot live in the presence of God. In 1 John 3, 1 and 2, it says that, Beloved, behold, I'm sorry, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. The world can't recognize the sons of God and the daughters of God. Only the spiritual can recognize the spiritual. You see that? First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man save the spirit of a man that's within him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Yeah. So you want, you want to understand this witness of God in your spirit and understand the Holy Ghost. You can only understand it in the spirit. If you're carnal, you can't see it, understand it. Mm -hmm. The world can't see it. A, a person that's involved with another person as a man or a woman that's involved with a woman, they can't understand this. They don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. But if they would look at the natural, so if you got, what happens if two male birds come together? 
Yeah. They start fighting, man. Yeah. You're in my territory. You're trying to take my woman. You're trying to take my food. You're trying to take my babies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Their only goal is to produce their kind for the next generation. Mm -hmm. And everything they're doing is about taking care of those babies, making sure they grow up. And what are we doing in the world? We just let them go and do whatever they want to do, man. No boundaries, no instructions, no order, no authority in their lives. And we wonder why our kids are, are the way they are. Lawless and loud and rude and crude and inconsiderate. Man. And so it says, Beloved, now are we the technons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Yeah. Where is he going to appear? In your spirit, man. That's where the Holy of Holies is. That's where he comes out with his presence. And that's how you begin to understand that when you see him, you don't know that you're seeing him in your presence. And I pray this all the time. I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm getting when I'm in your presence, but I'm glad that I'm getting what I'm getting. Mm. You see, it's not for me to know everything. As he told his disciples, it's not for us to understand all this, the times and the seasons and when all this is going to happen. These are in the hands of the Father. So if he wants to reveal it, he'll reveal it. But I'm not going to fret and fuss and be wondering, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And da, 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 da. I'm just going to keep walking in what I already do know and what he's already revealed up to that point. And right now is to be servants of God, right? Serve one another. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scripture that says that for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We know that that's the purpose of God. Destroy the works of the devil. In my life first, because this is the land that we've got to conquer first. And then now, in my wife and in my children. Pour it right out, man. Take it out. Say no to this, yes to that. Amen? And, and, and so, again, Paul, like I said, he knew that, that, that what we need in the body of Christ was sons of God that are coming into maturity because the rest of us need to come up and grow up. And how are we going to get it if we don't get it from somebody else? Somebody else that's grown up. You see, the scripture says that the last is blessed of the greater. God is the greater. We're blessed of the Lord. But as we come into our strength, now we become a blessing to others. The reason that he strengthens you and he gives you finance and he gives you blessings is so that you can be a blessing to others. Mm. Not for you to hoard it up. And that doesn't mean that he's under, he doesn't want you to have, for example, you know, I like to take pictures and all that stuff and, or, you know, good strong computers to process all this video and all that. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want you to have these things. But he, he wants to make sure that this doesn't rule you. Yeah. This idolatry, right? He doesn't want this stuff to rule our hearts. He needs to be order of first things in your life. Because at any given time, he's going to call on you and you're going to say, well, no, i got to go, you know, take care of my wife. As one of the, one of the, one of the guys that was following him, the rich young woman, he told him, you know, go sell all that you have. No, well, he didn't understand that he was going to have a greater measure of all that because he understood how to manage finance. That guy was rich. Right? Mm -hmm. And if he can manage the finance that way, guess what he's going to do in the kingdom of God serving me, Jesus was thinking. You see what I'm saying? He would have still been there, but now he proved his heart. He says, well, that's what's first in your life. And the other guys, right? He told them, you, can't, you cannot be my disciple if you love yourselves more than me. You know? Your wife can't be number one in your life. Your children, everything has to be about Jesus first. So again, back to Hebrews 5, 8. And I wanted to read something to you out of Luke. I started reading it now. I don't know how long I got away over here, but. Luke chapter 2. So we were talking about. Oh. Let's see here. We ain't down here. I'm way up. Okay, so. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. This is Luke 2, 41. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in, in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew it not. All right? All right. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and their acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back to Jerusalem, seeking him. Three days, man, of this. I'd be going crazy. I mean, one time, 
we were at the ball game in Arlington. <laughs> and I had my little boys with me, you know, we had our little, you know, uh, Ranger outfits and Ranger hat, you know, we were all decked out. <laughs> and they were, my little boy was with me, and my oldest, I was holding his hand, well, I thought he was holding his brother's hand. Ah. So we turned around and stopped and started looking at all this stuff. And Thomas kept walking <laughs> by himself. He was four <laughs> years old, man. I'm one to cry. Woo. So I pulled aside. I went to the side because there was people walking in and down. I saw a lady with the radio. I said, ma'am, I need your help. She goes, what's wrong? I said, uh, I can't find my son. She goes, okay, no panic. I said, okay. And then um, she says, all right, what was he wearing? And how tall is he? Whatever. And so I explained to her a little bit about him. And she got on the radio. We have a lost young boy, four years old. He's wearing this and this and that. And then about 30 seconds later, they called her back. We found him. Wow. <laughs> Man. So I can imagine what Barry and Joseph are going through here. Okay, so when they found him, now they turned back. Okay, in verse 46, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Guess what? It wasn't his season yet. It wasn't time yet. Yeah. But see, at this stage, being 12 years old, he was a tech man. He thought he was ready, but he still, he still had a lot of more maturity to do. Mm -hmm. So it says, and all that heard were astonished at his understanding and his answer. Man, Jesus was a word man. He spent time with God, man, learning the word. And guess what? They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 2 Peter, 1 Peter, all that. All they had was... Everything in the Old Testament, the, the prophets and the, and the Torah, right? Mm. Man. So that's what he was pouring over and studying, man. He spent time with all that stuff. And so, and he said unto them, oh, I'm sorry, verse 48, And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his, and his mother said unto him, Son, technon is the word there, why have you dealt thus with us? Behold, thy father, and I have sought thee sorrowing, crying, man. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? And the scripture says of Mary, and they understood not the, th the sayings which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his father and mother kept all these sayings in their heart. Now the word subject here is the word hupotasso. He came and subjected himself the scripture, the word is to arrange under, to subordinate. In other words, to submit to one's control. The control of his father and mother. Mm. You see? And all this, remember now, all these prophecies that had already been set up about him. They, they, Mary saw it, heard it from the angel. Joseph heard it, right? Mm -hmm. They knew that there was something special about him, right? Yeah, yeah. They still didn't have a full measure of understanding all this. But they still knew that he was their child. Your child. And they had to set the boundaries for him. And protect him and take care of him. Because guess what? If, if we didn't, he's going to go off on his own and start preaching and teaching and stuff, and it's not time yet. Yeah. Hmm. Now, he went down to Nazareth and was subject to Hupotasso, submitted. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. Because he submitted himself to authority, this is the secret of promotion, by the way, is you submit to authority everywhere you go, your workplace. You know, your brothers and sisters, as far as your home, your families, your, your wives, etc. And so it says that he increased in wisdom, and stature means character and favor, grace with God and man. In other words, Jesus, you never heard about Jesus again until John the Baptist baptized him. 18 years. And his brother Jeff says all he was doing was fixing tables and chairs. For 18 years. Hmm. You understand? He was a carpenter. Yeah. They, they fixed roofs. They fixed doors. And guess what? He grew in, in increased wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. In other words, Joseph, his daddy, says, Son, I need you to go fix Miss Smith's roof. Okay. It's raining. Right? Yeah. He didn't have any questions about it. He said, okay, Dad. Boom. Got the tools, took off. Got the raincoat, took off. Fixed it. See, he, was an, he had an attitude of submission. 
he would do it with a good heart. He didn't give any his dad any fuss about it. And so we see here that because of that, the people loved him. He had grace, it says, in favor with God and man. God was seeing it and honored him, honoring him. The people were honoring him. Amen. And and everybody loved him. So back now we're John the Baptist, right? Mm -hmm. He came to Jordan. Jordan means the descender to go down. You gotta go down before you can go up, right? Mm -hmm. You can't be exalted or promoted until you've gone down. Your attitude, in other words. We can't expect we can't think that we've arrived, because I surely haven't. <laughs> and so the scripture says that. You know, John the Baptist refused him, and, and he told him, you know, it's got to be so, man. All righteousness must be fulfilled. And the scripture says that when he was baptized, John saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove, right? The power. And then it says, the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Son is the word weos. He came into maturity, and guess what happened after that? He went into the wilderness. Right? Tempted of the devil. 40 days, man. But every time the enemy came up to him, in one place he says there, uh, get thee hence, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Right? Get thee hence is a Greek word. It's the word um, hupago. Hupago means to lead under. In other words, he told Satan, you come down here under my authority. It is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. And so we understand, right, as sons and daughters of God, that we've got authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the dunamis, the power of the devil. You see? And so even, even so, again, Jesus was the pattern, and he showed us this by, by, by saying to Satan, you've got to come under my authority. Right? Mm -hmm. Now that is, you know, authority there has to do with... Um, You've got to submit before you have authority. There's only two things yeah. you can do with authority. Represent or substitute. Mm. So, for example, let's say, like the other day I was telling you the story about my sons and let the hammer out on the truck, you know. And uh, I said, uh, you know, make sure you get that hammer. And both of them, okay, yeah, papa, yeah. And they were all there joking and playing, you know. Next morning I showed up and the hammer was still there. So I told him, I said, uh, I, I already talked to him about it, but the point is, is that they didn't represent. See, they didn't hear under, right? And we're going to see in a minute this word, you know, hearing is submitting is to hear under. But um, they didn't submit to the authority of the word that I gave them. In other words, they disrespected authority. They rep misrepresented what I asked them to do. You see? So they... They misrepresented. So like I said, there's only two things you can do, represent or substitute. So they substituted and decided to bypass what I asked them to do. Now the other thing is, is that we can, you know, uh, two things you can do with authority is that you can, uh, what did I tell you I was? Represent? Substitute. Substitute. And represent means, so if you look at the word, break it down, re, re, p-r-e, sent. Pre is before, yeah, sent. Yeah. Okay? Now, they had a problem with Jesus, right? Who are you? Where did you come from? Why do you have this authority? Right? And all he was doing is he was representing the Father. He knew that because he was under authority, he had authority. You see? And so he was able to be that one that represented. In other words, he, he, he already had been and spent time with God. He was already proven by the enemy. And he came into his inheritance and what God had set up for him. And so as that, he was doing the will of the Father. And it's the same thing with us, is that we represent, and it means the same thing, represent. In other words, if you're representing, you have authority. You see? And, you're, and you're, the pre there is it, your time with the Father. You don't know what you're getting from the presence of God, amen, but you know that God's impartation is coming to your life because you spend time with the Father. You know that Moses... He wrote the first five books of the Bible, man. Yeah. Can you believe that? He was sitting there in the presence of God. God was revealing things to him. He would tell the scribe, in the beginning was the word. You know? And, all, and so, and the same thing with all these guys, you know, Joshua and all these, King David and everybody. These guys had scribes with them that would write and record all this information. 
But they couldn't have gotten that if they didn't spend time with the Father. Yeah. Yeah. And you know when somebody is coming out of their soul because what they're telling you doesn't have any weight, man. Just like empty words. So Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Though he were son, or we else, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So I'll give you an example. Today, I was at work, and I closed the ticket. And later, you know, the person that was the ticket was closed for, she said I needed to reopen it because it wasn't complete. And I said, well, one part of this ticket's complete, but the other part I need to get a package made, da, 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 and I wanted this other person to submit the ticket for it to do it in the right order. Well, she complained to my boss. And guess what? Joseph opened that ticket back up and submitted back to her and do whatever, whatever. Anyway, and, and it, it rubbed my soul wrong. Right? I got a little attitude about it. And I had to correct my soul around. I said, like, Joseph, you know what? Don't even worry about it, man. Just do what they're asking you to do, and that's it. And so I corrected my soul right away. But the point is, is that I had to suffer that. I didn't like it. My soul didn't like it. Yeah. But I still did it. And I had and I changed my attitude. At first I was upset. Now I just opened it back up, sent the email to the person that opens the tickets, and here we go. And there's many instances, you know, where you're gonna encounter authority and you and you and you know you have to be obedient to God first and then respect and honor the authority with the right attitude. Because you don't want to be in that place. See, the thing that we have to understand is that as fathers and mothers, whatever example that we're setting up before our children, that's what they're going to pick up from, their daddies and their mamas. So if they see their daddy speeding all the time, guess what? When it comes time for him to have the keys, well, he's 12 years old, <laughs> Peck them, he's going to be doing the same thing. We have to understand that we're the porters. We're the ones saying no and yes. We're the gatekeepers to their lives. And we have to be the right witness to them, man. The witness of God, in other words. So it says, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So the word obedience here is the word hupakau. And it means obedience, compliance, submission. Obedience rendered to anyone's counsel and obedience, and obedience shown in observing the requirements of Christianity. And then it says attentive hearkening. So, you know, you don't want to repeat your words two times, right? When you're talking to your kids or somebody. Yeah. Man, didn't I tell you? <laughs> you want them to understand and hear it the first time. Because what's happening is you're training them how to respond to authority in their futures when they get their jobs. And when they go and they have their homes and they have their cars and so on. They have their wives and they have their children. You're helping them understand authority. And so... <clears throat> And the word comes from another Greek word, 5219, which is, and it says this word is to hear under, as a subordinate, to listen attentively. So in other words, to heed or conform to the command or authority. So again, my sons didn't heed, or, or heed the command that I gave them, take that hammer and put it up. And that's just a small little example, but it, but it helps you understand, you know, that it's very important, you know, that we represent God in the word. And, and help one another when we're out of order and show each other the word. So verse 9, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now let me ask you a question here. Are we after the order of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yes, we are. Sure. So if Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek, yeah, we are. guess what? So are you and me. And so, you remember when, when Moses was bringing the law down the mountain and the children of Israel were having all their parties, right? And they were having their, you know, sex parties and whatever they were doing down there. And they told Aaron to build them a calf. And guess what? There's a major religion that still worships the cow. Mm. Mm. Still. Oh, India. Okay. Yeah. In India. And so, <clears throat> and guess what? Down there, man, they don't have significance. They don't have relevance and importance. They got to get told all the time. My boss was telling me that. 
the, when they have promotions, they have promotions every week for somebody in the places that people that work down there because they don't have a sense of value and importance. So they gotta get told all the time, good job. So they have manager one, manager two, manager three, manager 20. <laughs> you understand? They don't have significance because look at their God. You can't get significance from a cow. <laughs> Only from the father. So that tells you right there, man, whew, we got some major problems there. And though, so Melchizedek, <clears throat> just real quick, comes from two Greek words, Melik and Zedek. So he was a priest, right? And so the children of Israel, right, they, they were committing all their fornication stuff. And, and, and so when Moses came down, he smashed the tablets, right? And he told them, who's on the Lord's side? And the Levites, Aaron and his sons and all their families, they came on the Lord's side. Probably several of the other tribes. And then the rest of them got swallowed, man. Whew. Right? But the point is, is that that's why God set it up in the beginning through the Levite tribe. Because these guys wanted to be obedient. But it never was his intention for only to have one tribe like this. He wanted a kingdom of priests in Exodus. And as a kingdom, we were all serving God, serving the people, serving one another, not just the Levites. So Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek, Melik means king, Zedek means righteous, kings of righteousness. And so as kings of righteousness, we're priests unto our Father, unto the body of Christ, and unto the world. And that's, again, part of our inheritance in the Lord. That's what we are, man. The value that we God has put on every one of us is so critical and so important. <clears throat> so it does not yet appear what we what we shall be, as the scripture said earlier there. And so in Romans 8 14, it says, For as many as are led of the Spirit of God, these this is our inheritance to walk as Jesus walked in the earth, as sons of God representing the Father. In Hebrews chapter 2, Verse 10, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many we us unto glory mm. to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Guess what? When you go to heaven, when I go to heaven, Guess what Jesus is going to call you? Brother. Brother. Sister. sister. He's not going to say, how you doing, teacher Joseph? Brother, teacher brother Joseph. Oh, it's he sure. Yeah, he ain't doing all that. Whew, man. And see, we don't understand that we got some of that training and stuff from the world. That, you know how the Dr. Smith, you know, some people get mad when you don't call them yeah, the yeah, yeah, you don't add We got that impression from them. And we don't understand that God is not even going to hear any of that. So it says for both he that sanctifies them and they are sanctified. Who's the one that sanctifies? The word, right? Jesus says sanctify them through that word. He was teaching them the word and that word was causing sanctification and holiness in their lives because they separated unto the Lord. So the word is what sanctifies. So both he that sanctifies, he's still doing the same thing and sanctifying through one another. As the word comes out, it's what begins to separate you unto the Lord. Not unto that glory of that person, but the glory of Christ in us, the hope of glory. <clears throat> Verse, 1 John 3.3 3. And every man that hath this hope in himself purifies himself as he is pure. Remember that your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And that soul has to be trained in the ways of God. Your spirit man, all day long, as Jesus said, the spirit man is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we got to maintain our souls and make sure that our, we don't allow ourselves, our souls, to get out of line with God. Verse 4, 1 John 3, 4. For whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. In other words, if we didn't have the law, we would have never had sin. But now grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It's no longer about the letter of the law that kills. It's now about the spirit of the law. Grace and truth. So, and we know that, at, that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Whosoever therefore, 
Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. You see, whosoever sins abideth in him sinneth not. How in the world can we not sin? We must abide in him. He's, our, he's in your spirit. And if you're led of the spirit, you're not thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about the world. And therefore, you can stay sanctified unto the Lord because of the word that's in your heart. Mm. <clears throat> Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, Jesus. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, the we house of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen? Amen. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. In other words, when it comes forth out of your spirit because of that breath of God breathing on that word of God, there's no sin there. But if, but if you come out of your soul and, and, and trying to bring the presence of the life of God, you're never going to accomplish it because it can't come out of our soul. <clears throat> For his seed, it says, whosoever born of God did not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. Abides, mino, which is to stay in a given place, state, relation, or expectancy. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. He's, he's generated from the Father. And his desire is not to sin anymore. See, he only wants to serve God. In this, the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So the word uh, children here, 1 John 3, 10. Is the word <clears throat> technon. So in this, the children, the technons of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. The sons of God are the we also God. Those that are fully mature destroy the works of the devil and take back the land, the inheritance in the spirit realm. Mm. Destroying the works of the devil is our metron. It's the boundary that God has given us. We are called to reconcile everything back to the Father and what, and what the enemy has taken from us. He's a thief, right? And he steals, steals kills, and destroys. That's his whole purpose. He wants to steal that word out of our hearts and our lives, amen. And that's his goal. If he can keep you away from the word, you're never going to grow up in the Lord because that seed is not in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to break this bread of life, amen. I thank you, Lord Jesus, as your word declares that man shall not live alone, but by every rhema that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live. We need this word in our lives, Father God, on a daily daily, daily, every day of our lives, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, for my brothers and sisters here that are partaking. I thank you, Lord, for those that are listening on the broadcast, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that you sanctify us through your word, Father. Your word is truth. And I thank you, Lord God, that you put the desire in our hearts, Father God, for all of us to grow up, Father God, and come into our own inheritance and our own strength, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for the pattern of Jesus Christ and how that he learned obedience by the things that he suffered, Father. Help us to understand, Lord God, that we must manifest your glory, which is your will, Father God. And your will is for us to do it according to the pattern, which is Jesus Christ. See that thou makest this tabernacle according to the pattern that I showed you on the mount, is what you told Moses. And the pattern was Jesus Christ, amen. And that's the pattern that we desire to follow in our lives, Father God. Thank you again, Father, for this opportunity, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Very much. Yes, yes. Feel free. This Bible Sons studies or may we service. You understand everything? <laughs> then praise God. But if you have questions, Amen. It's the opportunity that you have. Amen. I want to just say thank you all so much because you're digging and as the notes in the, in the, the scriptures, as the son actually, mm -hmm. it opened our minds of understanding deeper into obedience. Amen. Yeah, because... There's a purpose behind it. Amen. Oh, you especially you exemplify on the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. And by that, 
if we need to really have the result that Jesus had and the apostle had, mm -hmm. indeed, we have yes. to submit our whole self to God. Yes, sir. So we do it His way and not our way. Amen. So I'm Amen. grateful to God yeah, for Hallelujah. this teaching of as an eye opener again. Praise God. God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord who is bound in me. The right hand of the Lord is a strong dead. The right hand of the Lord who is bound in me. I shall live and tell of the works of the Lord. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings the righteous, the sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. Joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwellings of the righteous. of this very thing of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ I'm confident of this very thing that he He shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ.